All right, folks, today my article headline says, U.S. marijuana business licensing declined for the first time in 2023. After a year of double after years of double digit growth, active marijuana business licenses in the US has declined for the very first time. According to a new report by CRB Monitor, which is a cannabis intelligence firm from Nashville, Tennessee, that tracks and monitors licenses. As active U.S. cannabis business licenses, including medical and recreational marijuana markets, declined 4% from 2022 to 2023. By contrast, the number of active Canadian business licenses increased 2% in the same period. The total number of active licenses in the two countries combined had been doubling nearly every year since 2029. But signs of a plateau appeared in 2022 when year-over-year growth slid to 28%. In fact, the number of active U.S. and Canadian market licenses peaked at 51,000 during the first quarter of 2023. Active licenses slipped later in the year, which ended with with roughly 49,000 than 200, which equivalents to that 2% decrease. The uh, CRB monitor, Steve Kimmerling, claims that he thinks this is a good thing for the industry. He thinks that this plateau is smart. He said the leveling off of licenses, counts, <clears throat> license counts, reflects a natural consolidation of a new market entering its early adolescence. He says, as painful as it is for individual participate, participants who are caught up in it, and he's referring to consolidation. He says it's a healthy reaction that will set up the industry for sustainable future growth. Regarding the U.S. cannabis licensing, he says the number of active U.S. cannabis licenses peaked at about 44,300 during the fourth quarter of 2022. Even with a strong pipeline of new marijuana business licenses in 2023, roughly 1,900 active licenses had been abandoned or lost by the end of the year. The number of approved licenses, newly licensed cannabis businesses that have yet to begin operations, surged by 23% in 2023, with most growth happening between January and September. The introduction of new licenses in 23, mostly mostly are in new and expanding markets, could not keep up with the losses happening in the mature markets. And license applications, including those pending approval, peaked in the first quarter of 2023 at about 8,900, only to decline sharply at the year end, down 20% from 2022. New and expanding state markets created the most growth in domestic cannabis business licenses, obviously. It says marijuana regulators in New Mexico, New York, and Vermont approved hundreds of new business licenses in 23, and New Mexico led the nation, actually, with 600 new active licenses in 2022. New York's regulated marijuana market finally has expanded, and of course, after you guys know all those delays we've been talking about, they roughly have added about 360 licenses, while Vermont's market contribute about 240 approximately. Michigan has nearly 550 active licenses, and keep in mind this includes everything from cultivation to retail. And uh, let's see, California, which um, of course you guys have been hearing about the struggles in California, has a declining sales because of pressure from, of course, our lovely illicit market and our overtaxation. Uh, We've seen a lot of numbers decrease in the state of California, and it's arguably the world's largest cannabis market. So that's pretty concerning. It says the the state shed about 2,300 active licenses in 2023, which is an overall 19% decline. That's here in Cali. Vertically integrated licenses also have been on the decline. They think that some of those numbers fell just because the uh, MSOs have pulled out of certain markets. It says by the fourth quarter of 23, there were only 875 active vertically integrated licenses in the entire country, which was an 11% drop from the previous quarter. 
Hemmerling recalls that he calls it the revenge of the OGs as many large vertically integrated operators failed to reap the benefits of scale and struggle uh, and have struggled <laughs> against local producers and retailers. You guys, it's working. Keep doing it. <laughs> The original thesis of the vertically integrated multi-state operator having the advantage of scale and capital to dominate the regulated cannabis market has been thoroughly refuted, according to the author of this, this study. He said, the economies never materialized and the capital has been torched. And I absolutely think that that is spot on. Talks a little bit more about the Canadian market. It says, despite a number of retail closures, the number of active Canadian cannabis licenses reached a milestone last year. It said it had an active license increase at 2% year over year, ending 2023 with 6,860 licenses. As the pipeline of upcoming licenses, those are pending approval, declined by 13%. And they're seeing I, uh, that, which is a 45% decrease since 2022. At the end of the day, guys, we are definitely starting to experience what new markets always experiences, price compression and consolidation. This is definitely telling. I think it supports a lot of what many of us have said the last year or two on this show. Um, and I'm really excited to uh, get some feedback from the rest of my correspondents and people in the chat. Well, 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 Mandy. I'll tell you what, I am not surprised by this because this really goes back to our first story with Rico because there is too much local control. And I think that's what's stifling a majority of these licenses from, from becoming available. I mean, you look in California, we have like six, 700 stores throughout the entire state. Like that's just crazy. We have probably have more cities in California than we do dispensaries. And I mean, I can't say this without a hundred percent certainty, but I can't think of another industry that has more production and surplus happening in it than it does have options to sell the product. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You, you know why? You know why I hate this article? Why? Because uh, I have issues. No, I'm just kidding. We the reason why that. I hate this article that, is because licenses are no are not a leading or lagging indicator because the analysis is structurally flawed. You have states that have a single license and you can open as many retail locations with a single license. You have states where you have a license that allows you to do manufacturing, retail, and distribution with a single license. You have states where you have to have licenses for each part of the supply chain. And so this hodgepodge notion that we can contrast licenses as a data point, much less between the United States and Canada, where the only similarity is we're on the same continent when it comes to regulatory uh, consistency, just makes this like I'm sorry. I mean, I was feeling bad because I'm going to talk a lot of smack about this CEO. And we've been friends on LinkedIn since August of 2020. But brah, that's not a number that gives you anything as a data point. Like, thank you for crunching numbers that tell me nothing. Now, everything I needed to know about that long-winded article came from Andy Tingler as summary at the end. But the idea that you could contrast licenses across states and municipalities when all of those regulatory paradigms, the only only thing they share is that it's cannabis makes this fake news. There's no news in it. Makes this fake news. Mm -hmm. What do you think about this? Stone? Yeah. I don't know about that Yarrow, but, um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you, Mandy. I think we got the, we got the year of the trap coming. I think we're seeing a lot of people fall off in the industry that was set up to fail before it ever started. Um, you know, with, <laughs> Everybody's getting gaffled by the by their local and state authorities, by the feds, by everything. Your people are falling off. It's just going to help the trap market grow. Um, I think if we were just talking about Oklahoma. I, from friends in Oklahoma, are talking about just wait till the fall. You're going to see so many businesses fold just because of, of all the all the bullshit. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. doesn't surprise and me. Also, it doesn't surprise me either that there are businesses that are calling it quits at the end of the year. That's when most companies call it quits they don't want to have to get stuck on the hook if they know that their company's in doomsday and they don't want to pay out you know december when they know they're going mm -hmm. under in january like that's just very common look at all business 
models like that's normal um also we are in a infancy of a economy and not just here in the u.s this is global right so Mm -hmm. all of us if you thought you were going to come in here and have some kind of smooth sailing down the river like you're kidding yourself get ready for the roughest waters for the rest of your life here the only people that are going to have it easy is like my kids kids who are going (laughs) to run these businesses because the rules will mostly be shaken out by then social equity won't even be a topic anymore because Mm -hmm. they'll call it a wash at that point the whole globe will have access to this plant except for maybe i don't know like antarctica idaho and um (laughs) like antarctica will have it before idaho at this rate um (laughs) But I'm just saying, like, mm-hmm. like here's here's the other thing about this article, right? Consolidation is normal. You know, every single clothing shop and grocery store and distribution company that opened in New England, you know, forever ago is not in existence today. Not all of them. There's going to be some of us that are still standing and some of us that aren't. So, so Mandy's M- Mandy's summary is the is the the best part of the article because it's spot on. But one of the other problems with using licenses as some sort of indicator is it doesn't it doesn't speak to the licenses that were acquired by other end entities through mergers and yeah. acquisitions, which is also not being expressed through this idea of, well, we're just gonna measure year over year license change and doesn't speak to the bigger issues that Mandy touched on at the end of the article. And then it also doesn't, speak to companies that were a little top heavy and shed some of their licenses just to be leaner and meaner. It doesn't mean that they're out of business. They may have said, you know, we realize we don't need to be vertically integrated. We're supposed to focus on just doing two or three things and doing it really well. So some of these companies may have had a distribution license and decided no longer to self-distribute, or there was something that happened with Herbal and now they're with Navis. And so again, I think that what Mandy has said is spot on. I just don't think that measuring year over year change of licenses across 30 plus states and two countries gives us the data that she was able to articulate because of her positioning in the industry. Any any thoughts on this, Stone? You're good. Any thoughts on this, Irish? Again, I'm just sitting here from an Australian perspective, scratching my head, hoping it doesn't fall on our lap. Yeah, that's it. It's. I'm <laughs> you, we're gonna go to a commercial. We're gonna. Don't be worry, right back. you guys will figure it out before we do anyway. <laughs> <laughs> 